Hello everyone, it's Elliot here, back for another video talking about the Criterion Collection. I know that's been a trend lately, I've been really into Criterion, and in particular there's been a sale here in the UK. Now I did a recommendation video on what to buy during this sale, but I did also partake in this sale myself. I've picked up a bunch of titles that I'm going to show to you in this very video. I'm not going to beat too much around the bush, I just want to get into showing you what I bought, but I will say I bought 11 titles and all of these but one of them I hadn't seen before, so they were blind buys. I wasn't too familiar with the films but I'd known the filmmakers, but I made a particular effort for this video to actually watch them all before I come on and talk about them. So I've seen all of these now. I, I hope you're, you'll be pleased with me because usually I buy some of these and they just go straight on the shelf and they don't get watched for like a year or two. I kind of dug a hole for myself here because my comments might not be very good. They might not be very informative at all. Oh dear. So to begin, the first film that I got in this sale, Anatomy of a Murder. This film is so good, you guys. If you've not seen this, I would recommend this to absolutely everyone. It'd been on my film watch list for ages, but for whatever reason, I hadn't gotten around to it. Which is strange, because I'm a huge fan of Otto Preminger, who directed this. Huge fan of James Stewart, who is the star. And I'm a huge fan of courtroom procedural dramas. So this was ticking all of the boxes for me. And I just don't know why I hadn't watched it sooner. Like most courtroom dramas, the majority of the action takes place within the courtroom. And you can always tell a good one is when you start visualising what they're talking about. Some of the bad ones are really bad and very boring. But this one, much like 12 Angry Men perhaps, is a, is a film where you start to visualise the court case and what is going on. The film has a long runtime, but it absolutely flies by. And that's down to, like I said, the direction and the writing, but also the performances of Jimmy Stewart and then his arch enemy in this, played by George C. Scott, who again is a one of my favourite American actors of all time. As with many Criterion releases, there's a ton of special features on this disc about Otto Preminger, about the making of the film, and about Saul Bass, who did the graphic design for the poster. And his graphic design is always so iconic. You know, I always think of Vertigo when I think of Saul Bass. So yeah, great release all around. Yeah, I would recommend this to absolutely everyone. The next film that I bought and watched during the sale is Failsafe. This is the film directed by Sidney Lumet from 1964. This is one of those paranoid nuclear thrillers, essentially. It's about this failsafe program that the US government has for if there's going to be an impending attack. What they do is they position bomber planes at various places around the world to prepare for a counterattack if the enemy is coming. What happens though is there's a glitch in the computer system that they have and it tells all of these bomber planes to go over to Russia and start bombing and the issue is they can't call the planes back so the drama then ensues and this is so gripping, so gripping and frightening as well. This film came at a time when everyone was paranoid about nuclear war and I didn't live through it, obviously, but I can imagine how scary it would have been. The thought of that war could break out at any point, a bomb could just be dropped and you could just be wiped out in one go. So it's very scary and the way that this film is executed really does ramp up the suspense and the fear. The cast in this is absolutely great as well. You've got Henry Fonda playing the US president who is trying his best to stop war between Russia and the US. You've got Walter Matthau who plays this political correspondent who is really trying to egg on this situation. He kind of wants it to happen. And the supporting cast is incredible as well. So all around a great paranoid thriller and an ending that is just so jarring, just so stark, and it'll stick with you. The ending is so 
good. The film is also quite an interesting companion piece to another film in the collection, uh, Doctor Strangelove from Stanley Kubrick. And that film plays on a lot of the same ideas as in Failsafe, because I think they came from similar source material that was available at the time. And obviously Strangelove is very comedic, very satirical, whereas this one plays it straight and is all about the fear and the suspense and the paranoia. So if you've seen Dr. Strangelove, this is a great companion piece, maybe a great double bill, although you would probably be very much on the edge after watching those two films back to back. Anyway, this is a great release as well. There's so many great special features on here about the making of the film, about Sidney Lumet. There's a feature as well talking about the appreciation of Failsafe from around the year 2000 when they were remaking the film. So yeah, very interesting and another great release from Criterion. Next up, The Prince of Tides, directed by Barbara Streisand. This is a film that I wasn't aware of up until maybe a year or two ago. I remember watching a video from Dice K. Beppu. He was going through some of the Laserdisc collection that he has because this was previously available on a Criterion Laserdisc, I think. And that kind of intrigued me about this film. I then heard a lot of people saying very bad things about it, saying that it's not a very good film, not really one that's worthy of Criterion. And then recently they go and upgrade it to Blu-ray. So yeah, I wanted to see what all the fuss was about, whether it is as bad as some people say it is. And I'm going to say it's not. It's not as bad as some people say it is. I actually greatly enjoyed it. And I think it's a great feat of directing that Barbara Streisand ended up making this film because it's adapted from a novel, which is almost 600 pages long. It doesn't feel like a very adaptable novel from what I heard from the special features. And it sounded like she had a very hard time making it because the cast and crew were so against her because they thought that she couldn't do this, partly because she's a woman and because she's Barbara Streisand, the singer. Yeah, she really went against the odds and made what I think is a really great, enjoyable film with a really good central message about trauma and resolving trauma and how it affects us in adult life as well. This is a release that really does make me appreciate Criterion because I wasn't aware of this film before Criterion and the wealth of the special features that are available on this from Barbara Streisand and the making of the film and things like that really do help grow the appreciation of this film. Like the film itself I, I enjoyed, I didn't think it was a masterpiece or anything like that. But after watching the features, you know, I really do appreciate this film a lot more. So, yeah, Prince of Tides, a great film, and I think you really should give it a chance if it intrigues you. If you're enjoying this video about the Criterion Collection, please do consider subscribing to this channel because I make a lot of videos about Criterion and Blu-ray collecting. And we have a great community here in the comments as well if you want to discuss further with people. So yeah, it would be great to have you stick around here. Anyway, back to the video. Next up, The French Lieutenant Woman. And this one had been on my radar for a while because I've read some of the works of John Fowles, who wrote the book that this is based on. And famously, that was for quite a while known as an unadaptable book. It just couldn't be made into a film because of how postmodern it is and how refer self-referential Anyway, they went and made a film in the 80s. Famed filmmaker Carol Rice from the British New Wave ended up making this from a script written by Harold Pinter and starring Meryl Streep and Jeremy Irons. And this is before both of them were, were very famous, so they were early on in their career. The way they chose to adapt the book is by taking the period setting of the book and then making the film about a film version that is being made of the book, if that makes sense. It's very postmodern, very meta. And honestly, it didn't work for me. I don't like this film. And I know that's probably a rare thing for people on this channel because people always say, are there any films you don't like? Are there any films you don't love from Criterion? This is one of them. I don't like this film. And I'm willing to give it another chance in the future. I felt like what they were doing with the self-referential meta-narrative approach was just handled very smugly 
and very very knowingly like they, they thought it was very clever probably that really came across it didn't feel natural to me and I don't think it works I don't think it helps take the story from the novel to film and I don't think it makes it a good film either in terms of the special features they are pretty good though it goes into the making of the film uh, it goes into the the setting of the film and it, the special features are interesting so I, I would only recommend this with caution to people if it sounds like your cup of tea but for me it just didn't work so yeah maybe in the future i'll give it another go next up antonio gaudi and this is a documentary from hiroshi teshigahara who is a really interesting japanese filmmaker like i really love his film woman of the dunes but this is completely different this is just a look at the works of gaudi that are sprinkled around barcelona this documentary is almost pure visuals and music. There's no talking heads. There's very little factual information being thrown at you. It's more of, I hate to use the word, it's more of an experience. Because all it is, is this tour around Barcelona looking at the architecture and the work of Gaudi. And I think it's great. And I think the music in particular, set with the works of Gaudi, it feels very otherworldly. If you're familiar with the works of Gaudi, you know what I mean by otherworldly, because his work is so alien. Like, the, the shapes in his designs and, and everything just feels very otherworldly, and the soundtrack on this completely complements that. So I just found it a great experience. The special features as well are packed with stuff about Gaudi. There's actually one from Ken Russell, which is an interesting connection to the Criterion Collection as well. I'd recommend this one to people that like things that are a bit more experimental, not very narrative driven. So if that sounds like your kind of thing, this is well worth getting. The next film that I bought and watched is They Live By Night. This is from Nicholas Ray. And I've talked about Nicholas Ray before on the channel. He's made some great films like In A Lonely Place, uh, Bigger Than Life, uh, Rebel Without A Cause, so many great films Johnny Guitar like so many films that I love but I'd never seen this one before and it didn't grab me as much as those other films I will admit that and I, and I definitely want to revisit it it's a film I found enjoyable but not one that has really stuck with me it's a film about two lovers who are on the run and caught up with this gang and they want to get out of the crime world they, they don't want to be dragged deeper into this it's what kind of set the blueprint for Bonnie and Clyde and Badlands and things like that. So it's, it is a good film, but it's not one that I can really talk a lot about because it, it just didn't stick with me. So I do want to revisit it. But again, the special features are great on this. So if you're a fan of Ray and if you're a fan of, you know, crime noir, noir-ish kind of thrillers, this is a great one and I would recommend it. I spoke a bit about experimental filmmaking before with Antonio Gaudi. This next one is quite experimental. It's two films from Chris Marker. So you've got La Jete and Saint Soleil. These are very interesting and unlike anything I've seen before. Uh, La Jete is quite a short film. It's about 20 minutes long and it's mostly told through still images. If I was to say what La Jete is about... It's about time travel, it's about history and in particular cinematic history. There's a lot of connection to Alfred Hitchcock's Vertigo in this, which is very interesting to read up about and the special features delve into that as well. Chris Marker really took an interesting approach in documenting cinematic history. It's something that he's been concerned with throughout his career and it definitely shows in these two films. La Jete is a film that inspired 12 Monkeys from Terry Gilliam. So yeah, if you're a fan of Terry Gilliam and 12 Monkeys, this is well worth checking out. And if you're a fan of Vertigo or just experimental filmmaking, very interesting set of films here. And I really enjoyed this release. Next, I got a screwball comedy called Holiday. This is directed by George Cukor, starring Cary Grant and Catherine Hepburn. And these were all people that were involved in the Philadelphia story, which is another film released from Criterion. 
It's a very charming film, but it doesn't quite live up to what these people would achieve with the Philadelphia story. If you're a fan of screwball comedies, though, I think this is one to definitely check out. It's not got Cary Grant and Catherine Hepburn at the top of their game. In particular, this was Cary Grant when he was really getting into his groove. I don't know if you've seen The Awful Truth, which is another film from Criterion that is available. Uh, That was very much the invention of Cary Grant as this performer, this suave character. Before that, all of his performances were a bit clunky and they felt very uneven. It was only with The Awful Truth that he kind of grew into his persona. And this came out the following year. And he, he was definitely honing, you know, his craft getting into the character of Cary Grant. So you do see a lot of that in this. And yeah, it's just a very enjoyable film. Not my favourite screwball comedy by any means, but I'm very glad to have this. And the appreciation in the special features, again from Criterion, is why we love buying these. So if you're into screwball comedies, this is definitely a great one. This next one is the only one I've not opened. It's Ivan's Childhood. I've seen this many a time, but I never owned the Criterion, so I I had to pick it up. What can I say, really? It's the beginning of Tarkovsky's career. So if you've heard the name Tarkovsky banded around, but you've not actually seen any of his films, this is a great start because it's his most accessible film. It's the one that's most narrative driven, but you still see a lot of the brilliance that would go on to be seen in Stalker and Solaris, etc. I actually believe that watching Tarkovsky's films chronologically in terms of when they were released is actually the best way to be introduced to his films. So yeah, it's one I would recommend to anyone that's already a fan of Tarkovsky and hasn't seen it, and then anyone else who is just intrigued about this great filmmaker who has gone on to inspire so much of cinema. Um, I'm not too sure what the special features are like because I've not opened it yet, but I'm sure it's going to be great. It looks like there's quite a bit on here. So yeah, Ivan's Childhood, great film. These next two films are, in my opinion, the best ones out of the bunch. I enjoyed these films the most, and for me, they just ticked all the boxes. They're probably what I would call masterpieces if I was just throwing that word around. This next one is actually a great one to follow on from Ivan's Childhood because it's another Russian film. It's The Cranes Are Flying. This is directed by Mikhail Kalatozov. It's a film from 1957 and it's all about World War II and young love being separated because of the war. It's just a very emotional film. It really taps into romance during the war and the longing for the one you love to come back, to actually see them again, the the hope that you will see them again. It's very, very emotional. And the filmmaking is tremendous. The direction is mind-blowing. There's so many things in this film that I don't think I've seen in any other film. And in terms of the cinematography, there's a lot of interesting tracking shots, very fluid camera movements, like a lot of movements through crowds, which for the time just blows my mind because you've got to remember that in 1957, cameras weren't very mobile they were very bulky you know this was really before steady cam was a thing so yeah it's so good and it won the palm door at the Cannes film festival when it was screened there the special features on this are great there's a conversation with ian christie and i love hearing him talk about films there's stuff about the cinematography of the film there's stuff about mikhail kalatozov and his interactions with the government and you know, whether they liked his filmmaking or not. And there's stuff about when this was shown at Cannes as well. So all around a great, great release. This is one that people have been wanting for ages. And seeing the film in absolutely amazing quality is so good. This is a gift. So yeah, if if you've not seen this film and if you've not got this release, I would totally recommend this. This is one of the two that I really, really cherish out of this bunch. So the last film out of the selection, like I said, is one that really struck me. Along with Cranes Are Flying, this is one that I think is such a great film and such a great release as well. It is Now Voyager. Now this is one that I really did not know much about at all. I've never heard of Irving Rapper, the director. 
I of course know Betty Davis, but honestly, the film was not on my radar at all before Criterion released this. And it was only this blind buy during the sale that got me to discover this film. It's a film all about a woman striving for independence and getting out from under the thumb of this really overpowering mother that she has. It's a film that I think is magical and the interactions that Betty Davis's character has with the different people in the film, I just found so emotional. Uh, it, it is melodramatic. It really is melodramatic, but I'm a huge sucker for melodrama. I love Douglas Sirk and I love Fassbinder and anyone who really amps up melodrama, I'm a huge fan of. So this film might not strike people as much as it struck me. But I fell in love with this film. I think it's it's so good. Really, I do. The special features, as always on Criterion, are pretty damn good. In particular, the thing that I love on this is the interview from the Dick Cavett show with Betty Davis from the 70s. Now, I'm a huge fan of Dick Cavett and his talk show. Like, I've watched so many clips from the Dick Cavett show on YouTube. And I think he just has a way with talking to actors and directors and filmmakers like, that kind of stuff is just not on TV nowadays. Like, chat shows nowadays are so bad compared to, like, the old days of Dick Cavett and even, like, early Letterman was, like, really good. We just don't have that nowadays. Anyway, God, I'm out of breath. <laughs> Talking about Betty Davis gets me out of breath. Anyway, I loved this film, and that concludes my Criterion haul. So there you have it. These are the 11 titles that I picked up. I'm so grateful to have these in my collection. It was such a good price as well, getting these for £12.50 each. Yeah, I, what a time to be alive when we can enjoy all of these great films at home and learn so much about the films and the filmmakers from the special features. Yeah, I love Criterion, and, th and this is why I love Blu-ray collecting as well. It's, it's, it's so good. I'm like, oh, it just makes me so happy. Anyway, I'll let you go. That's been my video, my Criterion haul from this last sale. I'd love to hear what you picked up during this sale and if you in particular have any strong thoughts about any of these films that I've talked about, please do let me know in the comments below. If you want to stick around on the channel, by all means, check out some of my other videos giving recommendations for Criterion films to buy. Just click whatever video is appearing over me right now. I'll be back with more videos on the Criterion Collection very soon, but until then, keep safe, keep well, and keep watching great films.